In mid-2020, the Naval Institute began to consider a new way proceedings could play in articulating the current state and benefits of American sea power. By January 2021, the idea emerged as the American Sea Power Project, conceived of as an evenly divided, three-part, ends, ways, and means series of articles that would appear over three years. The sequence was purposeful as well as logical. The natural inclination to concentrate first on the means of sea power caused leaps to judgment and short-circuited essential rationale and principles, and therefore should come last. This represented an institutional insistence on approaching these problems differently. Typically, the strategy is often constrained by platforms and programs which have been long in the making. Proceedings decided to go back to first principles in the ends part of the project. We would start by reminding readers what American sea power is for, and then determine how to use it. Then, and only then, would proceedings and its readers consider what capabilities the Department of the Navy needed, how much, where, with which allies, and for how long. Given the significant and rapidly changing national, global, and technical circumstances, it was clear from the outset of the project that the United States needed to re-emphasize the sea service's role in national strategy going forward. It was equally apparent that missing from the debate were foregone conclusions about U.S. naval power that had been taken for granted during the Cold War and that it would not be possible simply to infer a U.S. naval strategy. Inspired by the approach of the Naval Institute's 150th anniversary, the premise for the American Sea Power Project was simple but profound, that Congress, the White House, and the American people themselves needed to be reminded of the primary relevance of sea power. Persuading politicians and the public of the need for sea power was going to require a cycle of navalist reflection, conception, rationalization, and articulation. The result would be a series of curated articles according to a topical agenda, that the United States in general and the sea services specifically had a lot of catching up to do to get back to the point where they could deal with the exigencies of revived great power competition. From the start, the project's topic list was bursting at the seams, framing an unabashedly Mahanian perspective that maritime power is the single greatest determinant of geopolitical power, that this thesis had been largely forgotten and that where it was remembered, it was often derided and rejected. What we did not grasp in planning this series was the extent to which the pigeons of post-Cold War sea power neglect were coming home to roost, and just how timely this project would be. In fact, the then already apparent ambitions of Chinese President Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin's subsequent invasion of Ukraine, the recent chaotic tragedy in Israel and Gaza, and the Iranian-backed Houthi attacks on merchant shipping in the Red Sea are clear assaults on the U.S.-led international order. This review and building to prescriptions was designed to provide the substance for decisions, strategies, and acquisitions that are as well informed as possible while taking into account the daunting effects of intervening changes. Phase one set out to describe the ends of American sea power starting with the first article framing the project. We reintroduced the subject of American sea power from its first principles as a primer for commanders, political leaders, and a concerned public on how the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps can respond to and control world developments. Authors tied national greatness and security to sea power, laid out the basis for American sea power in commerce and oceanic movement, and reminded readers of the enduring relevance of Mahan and Corbett. In his Great Responsibility Demands a Great Navy, Naval War College professor James Holmes wrote, the Navy constitutes the long arm of foreign policy for this ocean-going republic. Ergo, great responsibility demands great sea power. Only a Navy capable of executing an offensive strategy across transoceanic distances will do. In April 2021, Professor Nick Lambert tackled the existential naval question, what is a Navy for? 
Refuting the popular notion that Alfred Thayer Mahan wrote only about battle fleets, Dr. Lambert reminded us that Mahan became a pioneering thinker about the importance of naval power in a globalized world economy, and that his understanding came to center on the role of naval power in facilitating or deranging international trade. Other authors provided opposing views on the continuing importance of forward naval presence and the wealth-creating basis of the maritime commercial system. They stipulated what was at stake in the Indo-Pacific and strategic maritime approaches, but that maritime power was not an American birthright. And they underscored the idea that sea control and command of the sea remain essential Against this backdrop was the reminder of what happens to great maritime powers suffering from a lack of imagination, as well as how the United States triumphed at sea during the Cold War, especially during the Reagan years. The results of Phase 1 were powerful. At the outset of Phase 2, the ways of how to use a Navy, we selected 12 topics and began recruiting authors. By this point, early in 2022, it had become obvious that the American Sea Power Project was more than living up to its potential. The decision to commit more pages of proceedings to the American Sea Power Project reflected leadership and editorial judgments regarding the state of American naval affairs, and that the debate needed all the intellectual and practical support the pages of proceedings and subsequent Naval Institute events could provide. After almost three years, we have published 30 Phase 1 and Phase 2 articles, and additional Phase 2 articles will run concurrently with Phase 3. The outcomes of Phase 1 and Phase 2 are pointing to very different conclusions from current paradigms regarding American sea power in terms of character, quality, scale, and staying power. At the same time, project articles are establishing supportive rationale for more realistic and useful naval planning. In Phase 2, the project has covered a series of foundational topics regarding the application of sea power. In addition to giving voice in proceedings to curated topics and authors who have thought deeply and at length about these issues, other related initiatives include a growing series of proceedings podcast episodes. Another benefit is that the American Sea Power Project webpage is outside the Naval Institute's paywall. Also, given pride of place in proceedings are the comments from readers generated by the project's articles. Notably, the project's webpage has also become a repository of top strategy articles from the past by the likes of Secretary of the Navy John Lehman, CNO Admiral Thomas Hayward, then Admiral Ernest J. King, Professor Samuel Huntington, and CNO Admiral Harold Stark, and other greats. The Naval Institute is now moving into Phase 3 of the American Sea Power Project. This phase addresses the means portion of the ends, ways, means paradigm. Its goal is to generate expert, domain-based assessments of American naval power. Areas of advantage to be exploited, those in which the United States is at a disadvantage, and a sense of how best to apply resources in the context of a challenging great power war scenario. Phase 3 will be most familiar to naval professionals because it deals with topics they work on daily, manning, training, equipping, and operating the force. It would be easy to let this phase devolve into a discussion of existing programs and procedures or current platforms. But while such issues are important, the opportunity presented by Phase 3 is to expand thinking beyond current programs and practices, strategic, operational, and programmatic. Phase 3 is scenario-based and commences with the scenario and responses running in the December 2023 and January 2024 issues of Proceedings. The War of 2026 scenario is a point of departure for broadened thinking about the naval aspects of a possible near-future great power war and to inform decisions regarding doctrine, training, procurement, and planning. The scenario is integral to the goals of Phase 3. It describes not only a struggle for Taiwan and regional hegemony in the Western Pacific, but one with implications for leadership of the world order, with the United States trying to sustain the current one and China trying to replace it. This is meant to be a very challenging scenario and to derive the naval tools necessary to fight it. 
we are well within the so-called Davidson window of strategic and operational warning. The stakes, therefore, are greater than at any time since the Cold War and carry extraordinary implications. Business as usual is not viable. The War of 2026 scenario forms the framework for initial Phase 3 articles to explore the various domains of naval warfare. The scenario and related domain articles appear in the December 23, January 2024, and February 2024 issues of Proceedings. The emphasis for these articles is on warfare domains in the maritime sphere. This is distinct from Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard warfare communities. This scenario is but one of many possibilities, and it is not a prediction. It is, however, a plausible and dangerous scenario, one of the most demanding the nation and the sea services may face. Thinking clearly about this possibility will illuminate U.S. strengths and weaknesses and better inform decisions going forward. This scenario is an opportunity for authors to consider necessary capabilities and undercutting limitations in their assigned domains. Authors have been asked not to maneuver and fight the next move, but to assess requirements, capabilities, advantages, and shortfalls in their domains. Specifically, how do you assess U.S. capabilities in your domain stack up against Chinese strengths and weaknesses? How will you employ forces in your domain? What tasks, missions, and sequence will you develop? When might you begin to take the initiative? What support will you need in your domain? from other domains, from allies and partners, logistics and repair? What are your strengths and vulnerabilities? What, if any, capabilities are in excess? What capabilities do you need but lack? And more specifically, production of what weapons, sensors, systems, or platforms should be ramped up now to prove decisive in this scenario or a lack of which could prove fatal? Following the December, January, and February issues, Proceedings will host a series of Phase 3 article-length responses, including senior officer commentary and thoughts from Institute members replying to the War of 2026 scenario and the Warfare Domain articles. The American Sea Power Project will wrap up with the Future of Naval Warfare Essay Contest, which challenges anyone who wishes to contribute to the discussion to use the War of 2026 scenario and the Warfare Domain articles as a point of departure for new weapons, technologies, tactics, and strategies to strengthen American sea power. The deadline for the contest is 15 March 2024. While 2024 will see the American Sea Power Project come to its natural conclusion, the Open Forum of Proceedings will continue to promote a professional, nonpartisan debate by those who dare to read, think, speak, and write to advance the professional, literary, and scientific understanding of sea power and other issues critical to global security. We hope you will be part of it.